everything has been moving around Starbase this week. Booster 9, Ship 25, test tanks, and even what may be the first high fidelity mock-up of SpaceX's human landing system. Plus, we have a new mystery structure in front of our cameras. I'm Ryan Caton for NSF, and this is your Starbase Update. Starting off at Massey's, the hot staging ring test article is still there, hanging around with its friends, but not much else can be seen. The structural test stand, where this ring's installed, pulls on the ropes attached to the cap at the top of the test article, but the pressure is applied slowly, making it difficult to be seen from a distance. For that reason, it is hard to spot when these happen. In fact, you kinda need a time lapse to see when this is happening. Thanks to the Ring Watchers tip on Twitter, who spotted what seems to be one of the first, if not the first, test of this system. You can see the ropes pulling down on the cap and applying pressure on it. As of right now, we're not aware of any more tests afterwards. They may or may not have had any more, but as we just mentioned, it's hard to notice. I guess that could also be a good sign. If it were easily noticeable from a distance, then that could be a sign that either something went wrong or that perhaps it was tested to failure. Maybe this is a case of no news is good news. Also at the former gun range, the S26.1 test tank has moved to a new location. This is the same location where the B6 test tank got destroyed during the flight termination system test a few months ago. Could it be that S26.1 is also going to be used for flight termination system tests? Or perhaps it may just be for a good old burst test? We really don't know, but keep an eye on Starbase Live and we may figure it out quite soon. Moving over to Starbase proper, there's a new mystery structure being built at the propellant production site, sometimes known as the Sanchez site. We spotted parts for this structure on our latest flight over with Jack and Sean, but at the time the parts were all just scattered around, but now they're being put together. This structure has slowly been taking shape over the last week or so, but sadly, like many things around Starbase, we just don't really know what it's going to be used for yet. All we can do for now is just watch and see how it evolves over time and where it ends up going. Last week, Ship 28 was moved from Massey's to the engine installation stand, and work is now underway on this ship to prepare it to receive engines. Scaffolding has also been installed on this ship up to its liquid oxygen tank, perhaps to work on its interior as it preps for static fire testing. Fingers crossed, we'll hopefully see that happening right after the next flight of Starship. SN15 is continuing to be scrapped here at the Rocket Garden, where its last remaining piece, its engine section, still sits on its transport stand. It's quite a far cry from what this ship was just a few weeks ago. But while all of that was going on, Ship 25 was removed from suborbital pad B and transported to the Rocket Garden. Making its way in between Ship 26 and Booster 4, Ship 25 will likely be worked on over the next few days and weeks to be prepped for flight. This work mainly consists of covering the nose cone lift point with plates and heat shield tiles. However, other work may still remain, like checking out the rest of the thermal protection system or checking the engine section. We'll see how long it takes this time compared to Ship 24, but hopefully in a few weeks we'll see Ship 25 back on the pad and ready for launch. At the production site, the fifth level of the new high slash mega slash whatever you want to call it bay is now finally complete. The main structure of this new mega bay was started on the week of May 22nd of this year, so that means all five levels have been installed in less than three months. You may be wondering, could they be adding more levels to this mega bay? Well, the answer is yes. And no, I'll explain. We don't think they will add any more levels like the fifth, or at least if they do, it won't be for a while. These big pieces were prefabricated at the Sanchez site and then moved to the production site for construction, but there are no new pieces under assembly. So if they do add more big levels, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. But on the other hand, this new mega bay will need a roof section. So in some sense, yes. They'll be adding more to the top than what you see right now. Right in front of the bays is the good old ring yard, which in the last week has been cleared out of, well, rings, as you might imagine. At first it seemed like it was going to be for something brand new and exciting, and no, it's, it's SpaceX, they don't tend to do new things and exciting things in this way. The clearing of the ring yard was precisely to reconfigure the LR11000 crane that had been used to build the new mega bay. What will it be repurposed for? It's anyone's guess. 
Perhaps this reconfiguration is in order to help build the roof of the new Mega Bay, as I just mentioned. What was once dubbed the mysterious Ship 22 nose cone has been moved out of the mid bay and rolled out to the end of the village in Boca Chica. This nose cone is Ship 22's nose cone, although it was originally intended for Ship 21 and then it ended up on Ship 22's fuselage. It's a long story. After scrapping the rest of Ship 22, the nose cone was moved to the mid bay and had been stacked on top of a single ring. The nose cone also somehow has a door on it, as you can see on these pictures. The single ring has a dome at the bottom for some reason, and the door in question is not made of metal, but rather some kind of sealed cloth. The dome at the bottom appears to have two big pipes coming out of it, and we don't really know what they're for. The big deal with this nose cone comes from its labels. On these two electrical boxes, we can see labels clearly saying HLS on them. If you remember, HLS is the initialism for the human landing system, which is the lunar lander that SpaceX is building for NASA to return humans back to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. This is strong confirmation that the nose cone is most likely being used as an HLS mock-up article. You can also see on the single ring a couple of openings with what appear to be cameras inside. The lenses are even visible. One has to wonder what these cameras might be used for if it's just a mock-up, but if SpaceX intends this mock-up to be of higher fidelity, then it might explain why these are there. Another vehicle that moved this week at Starbase is Booster 9. This booster had completed a static fire test on August 6th, where four of the engines shut down prematurely and the test duration was cut short as well. The following day, it rolled back to the production site and into the Mega Bay, where it now resides, hidden in a corner and being worked on as we speak. The hope is that here teams will be checking up on its engines and perhaps installing the hot staging ring to be used during its flight. We don't know when it may roll out to the launch site again, but that's why we have Starbase Live and our team down there to capture all these events as they happen. By the way, did you know that work continues on the OLM? It's an easy joke, but it's true. Right after Booster 9 was removed from the orbital launch mount, teams reinstalled some scaffolding on it and have been working non-stop on the pad. Part of the work now being done on the OLM appears to be related to the installation of further shielding on its legs, in particular the one that is on the opposite side to the launch tower. This one has a set of stairs that was installed shortly after the first flight of Starship. It's a more recent addition, so it has less shielding. Another new piece of shielding is the door on the north side of the OAM deck, which was blown off after the first flight. Hopefully this new door doesn't suffer the same fate. It's possible that Booster 9's removal and roll also had something to do with this work on the pad. We saw teams lift the dance floor up to the OLM and a few days later they tested the Raptor Quick disconnects that are used to help start up the outer engines. Since these attach to the engines when a booster is on the mount, it makes sense to remove the booster in question if they need servicing and testing. It's like trying to service a petrol pump whilst it's hooked up to a car. Pretty difficult. One of the other highlights of the week at the launch site was the arrival and installation of the third, and possibly the last, big water deluge tank. This big tank will probably add more water capacity at the deluge tank farm. Maybe with this addition, SpaceX will be able to use the system multiple times in the same launch window, or maybe it's just a buffer for extra capacity. Either way, it's good to know that at last, all the deluge tanks are in place for the next launch of Starship. While Booster 9 and Ship 25 are no longer at the launch site, it's only a matter of time until they return and get together for that next launch we're all anxiously waiting for. Starbase keeps giving us surprises as always with new mysterious structures and the move of Ship 22's nose cone and we'll be here watching all as it happens.